Good morning, everyone. This is Chuck King on Wednesday, June 9th, 2021, bringing you the morning teaching from Forward City, Pennsylvania. We are studying spiritual warfare, and today we will look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. We studied the scripture from James yesterday, and this one is very similar that Peter shares with us from the Holy Spirit, that we need to take Satan seriously and resist him. Those two things go together. We must take the power of the enemy seriously, yet resist him. And it all begins with humility, just like James told us, that we need to lower ourselves before the Lord, recognizing that we have no power within ourselves and all the power that we have comes from him by grace by faith that we look to him to move in the holy spirit through our lives bearing the gifts and the fruit of the spirit and sending his holy angels to surround us and resisting the devil by his mighty power not our own, but it begins with humility. If we humble ourselves, then he will exalt or lift us up according to his will in his time. Verse 7 says we should cast all of our care or our anxieties upon him because he cares for us. We need to rest in him. Now the context here is the disciple facing spiritual warfare and actually suffering in order to serve Jesus, in order to resist and overcome the devil. So we must be sober. That means be serious. This is a serious matter, this spiritual warfare that we are in. Being vigilant means we need to always be alert and watching Be careful. And here's why. Because the devil, who's our adversary, he opposes us and everything we do for the Lord as believers in Jesus Christ. The devil walks about the earth like a roaring lion looking for people to destroy. We know that's true throughout Scripture. Even when in the the book of Job... When God called all the angels to account and Satan was there and told the Lord he was, he was moving about, uh, wandering around on the earth and always looking for someone to attack. But in Job's case, God had his hedge of fire protection around Job until he allowed the devil to attack Job the devil couldn't do anything and i believe it's the same today that satan is under the control and authority of the lord he doesn't do what he wants the scripture teaches that so as we serve the lord we have to be watchful and serious and uh, be watching for the uh, roaring lion trying to find ways to attack us and that takes us back to the armor of God and how it's so important that we have the armor of God on every day 
and that we we continue to have this posture of humility that we might be a channel of the grace of God, receiving the power of God and and living according to that power, not according to our own strength or the will of man or our flesh or carnal nature. Verse 9 says, the next thing that we do after we uh, humble ourselves before the Lord and have this this uh, careful walk of being sober and vigilant, vigilant rather, we we have to uh, be very watchful and careful, but we resist. You see, re- when you resist the devil, it, it's not passive. It's not just sitting back and doing nothing and uh, not not applying your faith and the grace that God gives you. But we need to resist him in our faith. It says steadfast, meaning standing firm in our faith. Remember uh, in the, the armor of God scripture that the shield of faith could stop all the uh, incoming attacks of the devil. And in verse 9, we we have this understanding that suffering is normal by brothers and sisters all around the world. The same sufferings we face in resisting the devil in standing firm and being watchful and walking in humility and casting our desire, our anxieties upon him, our cares. These same sufferings are experienced by everyone it's not unusual. And Peter encourages the church that the God of all grace, who's called us to to eternal life and, and glory in Jesus Christ, he will, after we suffer a while, see that suffering is normal for every believer, even though Psalm 91 is true, even though the armor of God protects us, even though we have all these precious promises and they're they're true and they're real and they're effective by the grace of God as we live by faith, God allows his people to face this kind of spiritual warfare that causes suffering, but it's temporary. Because eternal life is awaiting us through Jesus Christ. And after we've suffered a while, he will perfect or mature us and establish us and strengthen us and settle us. All the while we are in this warfare, taking Satan seriously, not, not real, not thinking that he's nothing and that we don't have to worry about these demonic powers and how they may attack us but no in humility we remain sober and watchful as God's grace empowers us to resist the in faith realizing that any suffering that we face is temporary and eternal life is coming for us let's take another scripture here two scriptures we need to respect satan's power jude 8 says likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh reject authority and speak evil of dignitaries speaking of rebellious false teachers that sneak in among us as disciples yet michael the archangel in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of moses dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. So we have Jude warning us not to be foolish and to defile and speak evil of spiritual powers. And the example of Michael, when he had this dispute with Satan over the body of Moses, which we really don't know anything else about in Scripture, But it's here for us that Michael didn't revile or accuse the devil. But instead, he said, the Lord rebuke you. So when he rebuked the devil, he used the Lord's name 
to do so, not not disrespecting the power of this of Satan and his and his uh, demonic uh, minions, but to stand in the name of the Lord and simply declare the rebuke of the devil in the name of the Lord, not like I, I, I've seen this over the years in my Christian life, how Christians mock the devil and, and speak uh, these crazy things against the devil, thinking that they, they are able to uh, say that, those things against the devil. But it, it comes back, believe me. People end up under even greater attack because they don't stand in the name of the Lord to rebuke the devil. We must rebuke the devil, resist the devil in the power of God, not in foolish statements that we make, that we have no power uh, to follow through with. Look at Zechariah three one. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, which we understand would be Jesus in the Old Testament, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. See, that's Satan's always there to fight against us. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? So in this case, we see the angel of the Lord actually rebuking Satan, but doing so like Michael did by saying, the Lord rebuke you. There's no disrespect or reviling of Satan, saying things that that uh, that are, are not correct to do against the devil in our spiritual warfare. See, we are supposed to resist, yes, but we do so with the armor of God, with the power of God, not in our own strength or by uh, saying foolish things against the devil. This will get you in trouble. We are only protected because we remain humble and walking in the grace of God, not because we say foolish things and uh, against the devil to revile him. So these are lessons we're learning to respect Satan's power even as we resist and rebuke the enemy, we do so only in the name of the Lord and by the grace of God, not in any strength of our own or any of our own intellect, words that we might say. So let's remain humble and steady and sober and watchful as we walk in faith and grace and resist the devil. We'll finish this teaching tomorrow. God bless you.